Hi, Kevin. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Welcome to New York. Oh, thank you. You left Deutsche Bank in 2012 and started Sustainable Insight Capital Management in 2013. Can you tell us a little bit about the firm? Right. So um, if you go back to 2004, um, uh, many organizations uh, like the Carbon Disclosure Project, the United Nations Principles for Responsible Investing, the Investor Network Against Climate Risk, um, uh, really the early 2000s, organizations began to pop up um, really focused on sustainability, climate change, carbon, and so forth. Today, there are, over, uh, there are signatories representing over $90 trillion in assets uh, that have signed the, co the carbon disclosure principles, uh, almost 40 trillion who have signed the United Nations principles for responsible investing. And we believe that um, uh, incorporating sustainable principles, in other words, environmental, social, and governance principles, as a risk factor in, in determining security selection is uh, not only important, um, but it's necessary, and the markets are beginning to reprice risk along these lines. So we were, we were backed by a prominent family office that is a very major name in sustainability in this country and around the world, and a prominent foundation. And one of those um, uh, gave us uh, the seed capital to begin uh, our funds. And so currently we have about $120 million under management. Uh, we're a year old this month, uh, and the interest in sustainable products and sustainable investing has really kind of never been higher. Your firm just published a report in which you said China is actually going to set the environmental policies globally this year. How? Well, I think China, uh, frankly, has been uh, underestimated uh, in terms of First of all, renewable energy policy, um, environmental policy. China has created an enormous problem for itself, um, but it's obviously not gone unrecognized. In, in the game, right, of the tragedy of the commons, someone has to move. Someone has to change position, right? Someone has to, one of the players has to realize that the path that they're on leads to the destruct, their own destruction in the end. And we think that China actually has the biggest problem. And that is going to lead to a necessity of leadership. So as China invests massive amount of money in the environmental protection sector, which areas do you find the most attractive? Obviously, enormous investments are going to be required, not just in China, but really all over the world. The numbers, the numbers and estimates from all of the research we look at it is in the, in the neighborhood of a trillion dollars a year. Uh, and I think last year and for the past several years, the numbers are really running at about 250 billion, broadly speaking. Um, so we're way, way shy of the goal in which everyone agrees is necessary to transition to a low carbon economy. You know, China's made huge investments in wind and solar uh, and really almost single-handedly brought the price of production of wind and solar down globally. Uh, and so uh, I think it's a safe bet that uh, wind and solar are going to continue to grow in terms of power production in China. Uh, in fact, uh, New investment in renewables has outpaced new investment in fossils worldwide for the last three years. Uh, so we see that trend continuing. China just decided to extend the subsidy for electric vehicles until 2015. What do you think this policy is going to impact the electric vehicle sector? Well, I think, it, look, you're on the same cost curve as, uh, as wind and solar power. Uh, the Chinese have a vast market, um, uh, and to the extent that investments are made there and production increases and per unit costs come down, uh, that makes those vehicles much more affordable to more people, which then creates more demand. Uh, and so I wouldn't be surprised 
if you see the per unit cost of electrical vehicles dropping in China, similar similarly to the way that you know uh, uh, wind and and solar power prices came down. Also this year, China is going to launch two more carbon emission exchanges on top of the five pilot programs they launched last year. What lessons do you think China could learn from more mature markets such as Europe? We, we wrote a paper um, a few years ago, um, and we use this term called TLC, Transparency, longe uh, Longevity, and Certainty. And in the minds of investors, um, TLC is incredibly important. And uh, some of the lessons learned from, uh, from the European experience is that there wasn't a lot of transparency in the marketplace. Um, longevity was always questioned um, along with certainty because of the politicians' resolve. And so when the market doesn't get those signals from regulators and politicians, investors don't move. So if I could issue any advice to uh, the China experiment, what I would say is from our point of view, from the investor's point of view, we're looking for TLC. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.